Welcome to the Student Pilot Podcast. My name is Simon Callis, a flight school owner. Each week, myself and my guests will be talking all things flight training and beyond to help inspire, motivate and support you on your journey to becoming a private or commercial pilot. Archie, welcome to the podcast. How the devil are you? I'm, I'm pretty good, Simon. Excellent. Thank you for coming on. Uh, so we wanted to talk to Archie today. Um, Archie is regularly traveling uh, from Bournemouth now, where he's doing his university uh, course there, um, up to us here at Sunny Coventry on a weekly yeah. basis. Archie's originally from rugby, but because of the uh, university commitment, he did have to move down there and now commute. So how do you find that's affected your, your training, Archie? I mean, just kind of slowed it down a little bit. That's the main thing. Um, okay. I mean, prior to... Going down to Bournemouth, I was in flying pretty much every single day uh, of three weeks in the summer, which was yeah. absolute bliss. The uni came along and, and completely wiped that, you know, yeah. kind of still managing, which is the key part here every uh, every week or if I can, twice a week, filling in the four-hour commitment. Okay. So maybe it's, um, obviously you're still doing fast track, you're still doing the four hours a week, but prior to that you were doing... Uh, sort of six to eight hours a week maybe more you yeah. know so so it's reduced your hours um how have you managed to adapt because obviously there's been weather problems you've had travel arrangements train strikes to deal with all kinds of things how have you managed to adapt to make the course work for you like i, th- I think the key thing um is sacrifices as sad as it is uh you haven't, you haven't stopped eating or anything like yeah. that, have you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, suddenly, the train fares are really like, highly priced and uh, also the time commitment. So definitely for the first month or so, I wasn't mm-hmm. kind of partaking in the full new student, fresher activities. Is uh, that a good or a bad thing, though? Uh, to be honest, like I say, I, I didn't really mind it. Yeah. Like, I, I don't drink a, a stuff. So, um, you know, a lot of it was just get absolutely off your face uh, <laughs> and, and I would have done that anyway so I would have much rather go oh yeah I'm going to Coventry today <laughs> but the uh, sacrifice is a, is a big part like sacrifice of your time um, but also I think you know it kind of shows you what's important in life like, yeah absolutely and I think you know for somebody your age looking at it in that you know kind of pragmatic way is is really good it's really good um so what are your tips that you have for anybody who um perhaps is faced with that situation maybe their circumstances are changed they need to travel much further to their school you know should they um think about going to a new school or is it or what would you recommend for them like you know distance and obviously um kind of convenience is, is a massive part of it like i'm not going to go train in a school in scotland i think it's a really good school because it's just too far i was really lucky because i found out it was like one of the first five schools i looked at when mm-hmm. i was um thinking of starting to learn to fly and i was like this is where i want to go mm-hmm. uh, and it's really close it's on my doorstep yeah uh, and then as i moved away obviously you've you've kind of lost that that uh, that selling point but I still feel like you know you've got to pick the school uh, and, and I go back to kind of saying sacrifices like you know you sacrifice for me it's a four hour train journey there that. <laughs> yeah. but like you know you have other stuff on there but I, I think it's it's kind of key to go with a place that you feel is right and yeah. distance shouldn't play a massive part it obviously does it'd be kind of remiss of me to say that it doesn't yeah. but uh, you know I, th- I think it's still a so, I mean, we, we've had people who have come residential. So um, we've had people from UAE um, all, all over the, the place, really. Um, so they are actually living closely anyway. So for them, although they've made that massive commitment to come here in the first instance, they're staying usually within four or five miles of the actual airfield anyway. Um, but for you, going to say a 12-hour commute in Yeah, <laughs> yeah it could be a, a bit, a bit tedious. <laughs> no, but for, for you, you've probably got one of the longest commutes out of everybody. I mean, we had Sam, he was coming down from Manchester, but he was sort of riding his motorbike down here or coming down in the car. But for you, it's a train journey every week yeah, it's absolute hell <laughs> <laughs> so, it's, it's not that bad yeah it's um you know it it, it can, as i said you kind of make it work and, and it is what you make it like, yeah absolutely uh, on, on the way down um when my coursework was due in i would be like relentlessly tapping away uh, yeah. on my keyboard getting that done just to make sure that over the weekend when it came to 
uh, flying, I didn't have any of those other distractions. But yeah, yeah. the four hour commute for me was, was, you know, both a blessing and a curse. Yeah, absolutely. So what tips would you have for anybody thinking of traveling these long distances? Uh, I've got to say, kind of meet with the school uh, mm-hmm. first hand, let them know what's going to happen. Um, if you don't communicate with them, you, you're going to get completely scuppered later on. Yeah. Um, you know, with, with you guys, it's been very forgiving. Uh, if suddenly something out of my control happens, like the train strike, it's not suddenly, you know, you're, you're a bad student and you're... <laughs> no, you've just got to work with people, yeah, it's, you know. It's exactly, it's, um... uh, I, I think also for the student, you are paying the school and it's you, you with that, that kind of comes that expectation that you guys are going to help me get to the goal you, you've like, got to you, you you've got to yeah. yeah i mean that that's a big thing i find with schools is that some of them aren't very good at that you know they will let you get on at your own pace and just leave you to it um for us if you're not on track we're going to pull you in and say look is there anything we can help with or you know is there anything you you're not wanting to tell us that you know you might want to tell us behind a closed door or whatever you know because yeah. we've had people who have had financial troubles and things but they didn't want to say and all that kind of stuff they've had people who, you know like yourself who've had time problems and you know you've just come in and said look how can we work this out and we've come up with a plan so yeah. it's just about a two-way communication i think um so yeah you, you hit on that make sure the school's aware of your travel arrangements because we can then make extra allowances for you to say right you know we don't want to move archie's schedule if we have problems or anything like that because of the commute you know some people if they're only local we might ring them up and say right your lessons push behind a little bit can we do this yeah, whereas for me that would it, it just completely... yeah it just can't work so I, th- I think also on like that's more the school's end but on my yeah. end i got to make sure that everything's kind of planned out yeah uh, in the same way that you know it whilst flying you know exactly what you're doing at exact point of time mm-hmm. for throughout the entire flight i gotta know you know i'm i'm heading down at this time here you know if i'm 30 minutes delayed uh, i've still got a bit of leeway in between and if more i can call the school you've got a plan for yourself and you know, you've got to wake up on, on time. Yeah, yeah. Train. We, we have this every week, though. It's amazing how you can come in on time. But yeah, we've got <laughs> people who literally live Sometimes in... like two miles down the road. And they're always like, oh, I'm half an hour late, I'm an hour late. And it's it's never their doing, you know, I don't get it. Yeah. Um, maybe that isn't a tip for, like, just long commuters, then. Maybe it's a tip for everyone. Well, yeah, just get to yeah, school on time, you know. <laughs> if, if you want to fly, come and fly. If you want to sleep, sleep. Yeah. <laughs> um, so just let everyone know that that's what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. Um, so how have you managed that with your uni as well? Because you said um, you'd been speaking to people to get some help from the uni as well. Yeah, so I... When I thought about this, I was like, you know, the first people I'm going to speak to is the flying school. I'm going to see whether this is possible. And then mm-hmm. after that, I'm going to go to my uni lecturers. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm I'm really good friends with one of them. And yeah. He's really chill. Uh, a, a lovely little German guy. And, and he was like, oh, yeah, no, no problem. No problem. Um, here's like all the lecture recordings. Here's all the slides. If you ever miss something, which I didn't, thankfully, due to the timings. But um, if you envy to go over something, it's here. Uh, I also spoke to a couple of friends um, if, you know, again, didn't really miss anything, but if, if there was a special event on, I'd always get them to hand me over all the notes, making sure that I was getting the full kind of use of, of uni for me. And have you managed to use your commute time to help with the uni and help you fly in as well? Or? Yeah, so kind of as I said, I, I was spending every single minute of that four hour commute kind of making sure I was doing something worthwhile. Yeah. So, uh, said when it's coursework time, it was all uni work. Yeah. Uh, when it came to doing my flying exams, it was all uh, revising. Yeah. yeah. Aviation law. Um, I, I think you can also, you know, just do something that's worthwhile. Like you know, put on a bit of music, get on with a bit of work, or uh, you know, li- listen to a podcast. You know, student pilot podcast. Exactly you know, the student pilot podcast. Exactly so student pilot podcast. What yeah. a source of information. Um, <laughs> No, but seriously, it is people kind of underestimate the power of learning on the move. You know, it's um, like podcasts and things. I listen to them every day in the car. I feel like yeah. I get a lot more done on the train. Or, yeah, yeah. Or like whilst moving. I feel like there's a sense of urgency. I think so. Which is great. But it's using your time, isn't it? You know, you could you can either sit on the train for four hours looking out the window thinking, God, it's going to be a while till I get here or do something productive. Yeah. Then you, you, you come to it rehearsed, ready to, to learn, don't you? So. Completely. Oh, I was spending my time doing uh, flight plans and stuff, for example. Yeah, exactly. Stuff like that, wind constantly changing, getting the latest forecast. Yeah. And 
you know, it was a, the best use of my time. I'm not sat here for 30 minutes. I mean, obviously, if, you, if you're driving in, don't try and do your yeah, flight oh, yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sitting there with a book open. Yeah. <laughs> Dashboard. <laughs> not but, that. No, but on, on the train, great. It's, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> so tell us where you're at currently in your training and what have been the highs and the lows so far. So uh, I think like, well, as of uh, about two hours ago, I've done my navigation section. So Excellent. Finished uh, like all the solo navs and, you know, the five nav routes that we do. We've done. So uh, QXC next? QXC next. Ah. Um, I mean, all the exams are done, throttle's done. Uh, the furtle. The fertile. Uh, fertile. I always call it a throttle. A throttle? It, it sounds better. <laughs> sounds, it sounds, sounds like somebody's saying say, throttle like, with a yeah, lift. Throttle. <laughs> throttle. <laughs> um, no, but it's the flight radio telephony operator's license for um, anybody listening who doesn't know what a throttle is. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, uh, whatever it is actually supposed to be called. <laughs> exactly. Fertile. Fertile. Um, oh, I, I hated that. That was like, yeah. it, it's so unnatural. Like, yeah. it, the best part about it was I got to do it with like someone that I knew. Like yeah, Steve. Steve, uh, yeah. Like, like one of my instructors. But it's so strange because yeah. you sat inside of a room with a map of, in front of you. Like I, I much preferred the written exams to that. I, I found that actually... Um... I was better at communicating while I was flying the aircraft than yeah, doing it in the it's, classroom. It's, it's a bit strange, but I think because yeah. you're in that environment, yeah. you know, you, you're used to it there, which helps a lot. And I think because you're actually on a, you know, when you're traveling a route, you know, okay, I'm, I should be making that call around about now. Yeah. But it's almost like you're waiting for the right time, sat at the desk, going, mm, should I do it now? Well, because <laughs> you're, you're just like pushing a push plane it, Yeah, ex- exactly. Like, at what point do I go, like, yeah, this is okay. Yeah. I've pushed my plane a little bit. <laughs> Shall I make the call? <laughs> um, okay, uh, so. Highs, highs and lows, was, was that it? It yeah. was highs and lows, yeah. Um. We'll start with the lows and, and work our way up. I mean, for Go me, on. it's mainly been the weather. Yeah. Uh, you know? Yes, England, yeah. Uh, notoriously really sunny weather. Um, and that's kind of, you know, held me back quite a bit. Like over Christmas time, um, when I was off from uni, it was ideal yeah. time. Weather said no. Uh, yeah. I, I, I wasn't getting up. Um, I think sometimes with the weather, the most frustrating days are the days where it's gloriously sunny, but it's windy as hell, you know. I've, I've only had a... like three of those. The worst oh, yeah. ones for me is like when you look outside at yeah. the ground level, it's yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah. It's so nice, you could sunbathe. And then you get up to like 2,000 feet yeah. and you're just in a whole nother kind of world. It's ugly and <laughs> yeah, you're getting thrown around. Yeah. No, not a good day. Because uh, also exams. Like, yeah, you know, it's not beat around the bush. I've, the exams. I've never met anybody who likes the exams. I, you know? I think <laughs> I, I genuinely think if you like exams, you have to be a psychopath. Exactly. I, it's I just is, <laughs> like, they are the things that every single pilot says that you, you just want to get through them. Yeah, yeah. You get onto the flying. Yeah. Uh, I was quite lucky because I I did like all mine in in quite a big group. Yeah, no, it was good. Time. Yeah, exactly that. And did you um did you have any bad lessons or bad anything? Lessons. I'd won, you know, kind of came back, felt like I wasn't taking anything on board. Okay. Uh, felt like I was messing up on everything which I shouldn't be messing up on. I was completely fine on this, like the other yeah. day. And it's something you guys said is that, uh, you know, in some for any, uh, example, in America, <laughs> you get a student pilot certificate. And yeah. it's like you're, it's essentially a license just not yeah. to carry people. Yeah. Here, you guys make sure that we're on our game every time we go solo. Mm-hmm. And I think that's quite important because, yeah. you know, that day, it wasn't I was doing anything wrong. It's just that I was, you know, probably fatigued. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. Just everything wasn't kind of coming in and, and acting as it should. I think it's important that, like, we kind of understand that those are... It, like, it happens. happens. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, it's we really... just got to keep safe and... You know what? Sometimes you'll always have days like that where you're on the ground and already things aren't going to plan. You get in the aeroplane, it's like all of a sudden. I can't remember what to do. Well, you kind of, um, it's a Swiss cheese, isn't it? It all falls apart and and you've just got to, um, you've just got to realise that those things happen and as long as you get back safe, that's all that matters. You know, do it again another day. self doubt. And I guess that's where really, that's what we've just, We've just self doubt, yeah. You, bit you of self doubt, like all being stuck in a rut. You, you don't feel like you're going anywhere. Um, I did Nav Route Two 
Jewel like seven times. Seven? Seven. I, I think that may be a, a record, but then I've just aced every other never. Yeah. It was just it because weather was bad. Yeah. Uh, I had nothing else to do. Yeah, yeah. And it was like quite a big step. I had to suddenly talk to, mm. I'll call them foreign ATC, because like... <laughs> But not actually, like, I'm going abroad, but it's yeah. foreign to like my little alien world of Coventry. Where I know <laughs> the lovely the, people of Coventry. Yeah, I, I know the guy who does Coventry information, like the back of my hand. Uh, yeah. I know the procedures and then suddenly you're going away and it, it's all different. Like, yeah. you, you've got to adapt to that. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think once you've got a few radio stations you've got to talk to, all of a sudden you feel like, oh my God, I've got so much to do. Yeah. You know, and it's, uh, and in reality, it isn't that much, but it's that your capacity at that point in your training is lower than it is now. Well, so. it, it's something I always kind of marvel at is that yeah. uh, on my like 10th or so flight uh, from starting this course, I was asked by the instructor and, and he just said, uh, do you know what that uh, PA28 is doing? And I'm like, no. <laughs> so just announced it on the radio. I'm like, I have no idea because I was only listening out to like my five vertical side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but now it's, you know, I, I'm able to fly the plane, hold a heading, hold altitude, uh, navigate and listen into radio, not just yeah. communicate what I need to convey and listen to what I need to listen to. Do you just do it subconsciously now? Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's, it, it's something you, you learn and develop over time. And I think it's important to say that you don't just go into it with this amazing ability to no. rattle off radio commands and listen to stuff and understand it. And no. Yeah, it, it's developed. It is. It's something that grows and grows and grows and you don't realise that it's happening either until you yeah. look back. You know, if you look back a few weeks, you're like, oh my God, I wasn't doing that and I wasn't doing that, you know. So it, it's, it's a big change. It is, um, yeah, the highs. Let's do the highs. Yeah, that's the key part. Everyone's like... Key part. One, one thing, the highs. <laughs> Hit me with the highs. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, the highs. Uh, I mean, the big one's obviously first solo. Absolutely. Like, that's like the main one for anyone. You, know, you speak to like any pilot with a freshly qualified or, you know, airline pilot with 10 can all remember hours. It. It's always the first solo. How, how was it? Were you really scared when you did it? Or? Uh, I had a moment of realisation where, yeah. like, I pulled back at 60 knots. Yeah. I'm like, I'm committed. Like, I've, there's yeah. no turning back. I've got to land this. I remember exactly that same feeling, you know, when the wheels just come off the ground and it's just rotated and you look and you're like, F- I'm doing this by yeah. myself. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like the big, big feeling. Um, that was amazing. And then uh, kind of second to that was um, like Coventry information saying, like, you know, uh, take off at your discretion and then yeah. putting it forward. Yeah, you feel yeah. like everything's going. But it, as you know, it... It wasn't really you're aloft until yeah. the wheels are, are up and then yeah. you've got to make the full circuit round. Yeah, yeah. And coming into land, like the entire pressure's on you. There's yeah. planes behind you. <laughs> people like vacated the runway yeah. waiting for this student to They're poised on the crash alarm. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Did you get a clap? Uh, I got a well done from three or so aircraft without saying they're cool size. Ah. <laughs> And, uh, and the guy in, in the, the tower was like, you know, congratulations on your first solo. That's amazing, isn't it? What else and what other highs did you have? Uh, I've got to say my, uh, my first solo flight to Oxford too. That was like the land away. It's not just like going around in a circuit uh, or flying in the local area. That is genuinely like I've planned a route that goes... Yeah to a different uh, I'm a real pilot after I've done that <laughs> I think it's that that is a realisation isn't it it's when you've gone yeah. from one place to another you've got there on time you know it's all worked out as it should have um, and then you get out the plane by yourself without an instruction you're like oh, uh-huh. it's so <laughs> it's like, check so, yeah. me out <laughs> so it's, it's kind of like with driving you wouldn't say you drive if you if you drove like round yeah. your driveway like that isn't driving you're, yeah, yeah. you've got to go venture somewhere otherwise yeah. it's pointless so so it's kind of the first time you feel like a real pilot, oh, isn't it? Yeah, 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 it was amazing. And I remember the day really vividly. It was kind of like frosty. Yeah. Um, everything kind of around was was like really tranquil. And uh, on the way in, you know, I got, I got another congratulations because uh, they knew that this was my first solo land away. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, every, everyone was really nice. I think that's a, that's a high, in fact. Yeah. Um, so then... Um, what are your plans when you finish? I said, other than like catch up with my uni work, <laughs> have a rest. <laughs> <laughs> when I finish, um, 
I mean, there's the obligatory, like, you've got to take your family on a ride. You do that. Yeah, it took me years to persuade my mum to go flying, and my dad... He's so scared in the car with me. There's no way, <laughs> no way I'm taking him flying. <laughs> yeah, it's weird because I think when you're training, everyone's like, "Oh, when you get your license, I'll go flying with you." I want some free flights. Try and persuade them afterwards, <laughs> and they're like, "Nah, you're right." <laughs> I have trouble trying to get them to convince, or like convince them to get me to drive them places. Yeah, so exactly. In, yeah, in, exactly. In and then when you tell them, oh, yeah, I need 100 quid contribution or whatever, they're like, 100 quid? <laughs> <laughs> I'll <laughs> give you a tenner. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, that's, like, the immediate thing. I think yeah. long-term plans. I've, I've always wanted to go commercial. It's kind mm-hmm. of been, like, I've wanted to fly since I was, like, age four. Yeah. Um, before that, it was, like, oh, I want to be an astronaut. So it's, it's actually just a step down from that. <laughs> um, but still, like, quite a cool There's job. There's still time. <laughs> there is, yeah. I'm, I'm still young. I can still do that. Uh, exactly. So I think next thing would be night rating. Okay. Like, you know, it's it's kind of a bit of a bummer always. Mm. Kind of have to come in at, you know, at the moment it's four o'clock just to make sure that you're within the limits of Santa. yeah, yeah. And, absolutely and I think also it can be really really peaceful like I'm looking out now oh it's and, great oh it looks yeah, so yeah. cool yeah it's great yeah. it's um it's tranquil it is yeah but I, I just, I'm a big like sunset person and yeah. I, can, I can't imagine what that would be like when you're up at 2,000 feet yeah I mean, admittedly in this like really really noisy box but <laughs> That's, so after that then ATPL exams ATPL yeah oh uh, the, the unfun ones. I the thought PPL was bad. I, I can't wait to do my... You see, you're, you're really a glutton for punishment, aren't you? You um, need then ATPL exams. Yeah. That's the other thing. Carry on with uni work. Yeah, absolutely. So I think it would be like night rating and then I'll I'll finish up the degree. Yeah. Good lad, good lad. So let's have a look. Um, so what piece of advice would you offer a student considering learning to fly now? So somebody who's just about to, to embark on the journey. I've got to say, um, like the key thing I think is to be confident in your ability, mm-hmm. but with that also take due caution that you should remain coachable. Yeah, like you shouldn't be too. Uh, in fact, it's called in uh, in that like human performance like a mm. macho ap- attitude and like yeah. you can do everything. Yeah, and it's the most dangerous thing. It's like the contributed to like eighty or so percent of yeah uh, air accidents is like pilot error yeah and it's usually just down to someone not saying something or not speaking up or not or, or just believing that they can do something when they can't yeah but then on the flip side of that if you don't have confidence in your ability yeah you're not going to reach your potential uh, your potential so you yeah. got to feel like you can do stuff but the instructors are going to know your limits better than you i think um <clears throat> there is a big thing with that because like you rightly said, if you're underconfident, that can be dangerous as well. But if you're overconfident, um, sometimes the instructors are pulling you back in line a little bit. Yeah. And, and it's not, we don't see it very often, but every now and again, you get somebody who, on complete end of the spectrum, you get somebody who's completely underconfident when they should, actually their ability is really good. And you get some people that they just have an average ability, but an ego bigger than the aircraft and you exactly. have to pull them back in, you know, so. It's, it's a dangerous um, thing to have. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. As, like, as you've kind of said on both spectrums if you don't feel confident in yourself you're not yeah. going to do those things that you need to do yeah uh, and if you feel overconfident or you know you're approaching stuff which you really shouldn't or you should at least think twice about yeah then uh you know you're, you're putting yourself in a bad situation because like let's not forget that flying is like heavily controlled and that's for a reason you yeah know, stuff can go wrong and stuff does if and, if and it will take, yeah <laughs> yeah, if yeah you don't take care um, so it's important to like know your limits, yeah, um, and also to to kind of be aware of everything else that's happening. I think also it's something that it's always that you're always learning, isn't it? Oh yeah, you know? like, I, I kind of um, a chat with instructors. They're constantly saying that they don't stop learning when they do their PPL, when they do their CPL, or when they yeah. do their FI. So, it's you know a student will come along and, and they may go oh well, actually yeah that's a very valid point and they'll look up something and that's yeah you know, and that's that's on. the odd thing there is some reciprocity <laughs> there is some reciprocity going on because you guys are teaching them as well <laughs> as in, in, in like, good and bad ways. no no that you literally are because there, you, you, there are things that they can learn about themselves as an instructor by teaching you you know as an example um you know they might change their approach because 
of something the student taught them about the way they teach you yeah. know so the whole thing's a learning curve um so one last thing then um what would you say to somebody who's choosing a flight school is distance a problem or not i, I kind of think like there's two sides to that coin um related to kind of a point earlier like mm -hmm. yes and no mm -hmm. um Distance, of course, is desirable. You yeah. want something that's on your doorstep. You want something that you can get to easily. Like for me, when I was uh, kind of living in rugby over the summer, if you guys had a cancellation, like you would just call me because you know that I would snap it up. I could be there within, you know, 15 minutes. Or yeah. Um, so, yeah, of course, distance is like you want to find something that's close to you. Otherwise, yeah. you, you're going to be doing kind of what I do and, yeah. and not flying as often as you yeah. possibly would want to. And, spending a lot of money on commuting, which could be spent elsewhere, yep. know, whether it is flying or whether it's like another hobby. But then again, you know, if if you pick a flight school that's close to you, but has a really bad rep, you don't get on with the instructors, you don't feel like you're learning anything, mm -hmm. then you're equally wasting however much money you're putting in, because it is expensive to do. Absolutely. And yeah. you want to make sure you're getting the most out of this yeah. that you possibly can. And part of that is picking the right flight school yeah so yeah i, I kind of think like it, it's something you have to kind of evaluate on your own merit yeah no one can tell you this is a great flight school and this is not because yeah. there's some flight schools which may have a great reputation on on, on the front yeah you need to go there you need to have a chat with them yeah. you need to potentially go on a discovery flight or a trial flight and decide whether that is for you before you make the commitment to oh i'm going to travel an hour two hours like you know sam did from yeah absolutely uh, from manchester yeah no it's a good point it's, it's just about what fits for you and you could have a flight school on your doorstep that doesn't work and a flight school an hour away that does or vice versa so it's literally about what works for you but i think the, the important thing is if you are going to commute is make sure you're really organized so that you get the best out of it when you go there I, I think also make sure it's what you want to do yeah like, don't set out on something because you know like there's stories of people in America that rack up 200 hours of flight instruction. Yeah. But this isn't even their, like, get license time because yeah. their parents want them to do it or uh, they think it would be cool but don't really want to do the exams. Yeah. If so, then, you know, kind of look at, like, an, another avenue. Maybe look yeah. at just doing trial flights or uh, if if you don't want to do the PPL full course, there's a LAPL. Yeah, yeah. And... and kind of tailor the situation to what you want to get out of it yeah i think that's a really important message actually is you know have the end goal in mind and if yeah. you haven't got an end goal you've got to ask yourself why you're doing it exactly really, you know so um no, that's great and thank you very much for coming on archie i oh. hope everyone enjoyed it and don't yeah. forget to uh, smash the like button and uh, and we'll see you on the next episode thank you for having me simon if you like this episode, please like, subscribe and ding the bell to receive notifications of the next episode.